Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'da habita filah a question was asked barakallah fiqh I have a question akhi I live in the Netherlands and now for quite some years the cult here in the Netherlands tries to boycott me just because I do not take from them and or speak about the mistakes they teach to people and don't depend on them and still do my own thing such as helping people teaching them basics about Islam and helping new revert sisters. I'm a sister and their boycotting project uh, pr projects has alhamdulillah no effect upon me mentally. I know there are sisters who do get depressed because of the shunning of these people. I just focus on myself on important things and don't give them the attention they want because that's all they do uh, every day slandering and backbiting uh, the flesh and blood of the believers. And instead of being a bridge between Muslims, they are more and more keeping the people away from the truth. This being said, what I come across is when I meet a new revert sister and she needs help, I try to help her with basic information. Then they don't contact me anymore or some of them even block me from their phone. This is because his beta is all over the place in the Netherlands and they are busy with inviting people to their cult or group. When another person shows up and she doesn't cooperate with them and she also follows the way of the Salaf, then people must be warned against her or him because the brothers are not safe as well from their slandering actions. The new reverts get scared, I assume because of all the lying about me and she takes uh, and she distances herself from me. My question, I would like to write something in Dutch and spread this around with advice to the new reverts because they are really vulnerable and do not know where to search. This is the reason why the cult can play with them. What kind of advice can I give them and why and how uh, they should not listen to people but do their own research because this behavior has impact first of all in the reverts. Uh, I really look forward to your advice. Uh, Jazakallah khairan. Wa iyaakum. Uh, first and foremost, Sahabatifillah, it's very important, as the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a deen and a siha, a deen and a siha, a deen and a siha, qalu liman qala lillahi wa li kitabihi wa li rasulihi wa li rasulihi wa li a'immatul muslimin wa a'immatihim. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in Sahih Muslim that the religion is sincere advice, and he repeated that three times. He said to Allah, to his book, to the messengers and to the leaders of the Muslims and the general Muslim folk. This uh, hadith of the Prophet ﷺ shows us the importance of calling to the book in the Sunnah. It shows us the importance of giving sincere advice to your brothers and sisters in Islam to the best of your ability based on al basira bi'idnillah ta'ala. And so as Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i, Allah yarhamuhu, said, which will benefit the one calling and the one receiving the call, and those who are new reverts. And what he said, this great Imam, he said, Da'wah to Ahlul Sunnah, Da'wah to Min Kitabi La Ila Kitabi La. Women, Sunnati Rasulillahi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ila sunnati Rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i, Allah yarhamahu, he said, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon him, because he was truly a caller to the book and the sunnah, bi'idnillah ta'ala. He said, the da'wah of Ahl sunnah so he gave us a beautiful ta'rif, <coughs> and a beautiful understanding, and a beautiful definition, an operational definition, one that we can operate and practice on if we can only get our nafs out of the way, if we can only get the hizbiya out of the way, if we can only get the disease and the desires out of the way so that we can focus on that which is most important, which is going to Jannah, which is fulfilling our divine purpose. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al Kani, I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So if our purpose is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to know the correct da'wah. We need to know the correct minhaj. We need to know the correct way to practice that nasiha and give nasiha. And so the imam said, da'wah to Ahl sunnah the da'wah of Ahl sunnah It is the da'wah from the book of Allah to the book of Allah. 
And from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Letting us know that it's to the book of, book of the sunnah. It's not to us, it's not to our jama'at, it's not to our group. And so, Imam Muqbil, he also said, which is beneficial in this discussion, he said, our scholars in their books named others as Ahl Sunnah and Salafi. Nevertheless, the actual practice of some individuals contradicts the label. You claim you are Ahl Hadith and you have no knowledge about Hadith. You claim that you are Ahl Sunnah while you have no desire to study the Sunnah or act upon it. You declare, I am Salafi, all the while you call to division and separation between Muslims. Very relevant to our discussion that there are so many people who claim, as we mentioned countless times, the reality of something is in its substance, not in its name, not simply in a claim. So first, you can establish that with these sisters. Establish that in your writing, that the Dawah of Ahl Sunnah is a Dawah of Ikhlas, it's a Dawah to the Book of the Sunnah. Imam Ahmed al-Najmi rahmatullah said, a person being fanatical for his group and aiding them even though they are wrong is not permissible. It is only permissible to stand up for the truth. So also articulate that, that it's only permissible to stand up for the truth, not to stand up for a position of Sheikh so-and-so, or Da'i so-and-so, sister so-and-so, or brother so-and-so. But it's the haq. That's, that's, that's all we call to. That's all we're allowed to call to. Imam al-Wadi'i also said, the fanaticism of Hizbiyah is isolation. The Hizbi does not want any good for anyone except those inside his group. Look at this. Talk about someone being a hater. Is that they only want good for their clique. They only want good for their crew. They only want good for their sect. They only want good for their jama'ah. But Ahmad Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah is the most merciful to the creation. They want good for Ahl Bid'ah even. They want Ahl Bid'ah to come back to the Sunnah. So what about their other brothers and sisters who are, who are from the Sunnah but have some mistakes? Of course, Bin Baba Awla, they want them to come back. They want even the non-Muslims to come to Islam, come to the book and the Sunnah. For the Prophet said, May you the law will be khayr you fuck the deen. Whatever Allah wants good for a person, he gives him understanding of the religion. Imam al Fawzan, half of the law ta'ala says, No one reviles the honor of the scholars from righteous people of the truth, except that they are though they are one of three individuals. A hypocrite known for hypocrisy or a wicked person who detests them because they prohibit his sinfulness or his misguided hisbi or a misguided hisbi who reviles them because they don't sanction his partisanship and his misguided ideology. So this is what you'll find in the traits of the people of desires is they don't love the people of the sunnah and they don't want good for them and they are fanatical about their deviance. So you have to articulate these things so that people know that these things are not from the Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. These things are not from the Minhaj of the Salaf. This is not from the path of the Salaf of Saleh, this Hizbiyah, and this fanaticism, and this calling to ourselves, and calling to our group, and calling to our clique. Imam al-Albani mentions or very important also articulate this, that Imam uh, Saleh Suhaimi, half of the law ta'ala, he mentions, he says, it is not permissible for them to busy with the science of criticizing and praising individuals before they understand knowledge and become grounded in its principles. So that's very important that you articulate that from the Bab al that that is not 
the duty of the lay person to busy with Kathra Taqiyya Waqan. This one said this and this one said this. The Prophet ﷺ uh, prohibited this. And he said that this is the way of the people before us. Uh, it was because of their ikhtilaf ala anbiya'ihim. They were differing from the from the anbiya. From the minhaj al anbiya. They divided in the sects and groups. And they differed with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they called to themselves in their paths. Kullu hizbi maladayhim farahun. Every every group rejoiced in what they had. And this is the way of his being. So Imam Suhaimi was articulating what Imam Fozan and so many other a'imma, hadimin wa hadithin, in this time and in the past, that these affairs are not for the average Muslim. The average Muslim shouldn't be caught up in who's on it and who's off it. They need to know Definitely, if someone is a harm and calling away from the book of the Sunnah, yes, they, they need to know that. They do need to know that. But should they be involved in all the affairs that comes between Ahlul Sunnah or becomes with someone who you think is a Hizbi or the discord between the scholars or all the fitna that goes on, do the general Muslims need that? They don't need that. They need to know how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How to come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and they need to know that that only comes with sincerity to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and following the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So start your advice with sincerity to Allah and mutaba and following the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and that the truth is the most important thing that should be given precedence over individuals, whether they're scholars or otherwise, and that they should not involve themselves in confusion and fit. How many people have been dra dragged into affairs? And I'm going to end with this statement of Imam al-Albani who gave advice. He said, I advise you and the other young ones who have stood upon a deviated path as it appears to us, Wallahu alam, to not waste your time in criticizing each other and to say so-and-so said this and so-and-so said that because firstly, this has nothing to do with el knowledge. And secondly, this manner of speaking and dealing with each other burns the chests. And it allows for malice and hatred to enter the hearts. Rather, what is upon you is knowledge, for it is knowledge that will reveal. Is the speech in the praise of Zaid, who has a lot of mistakes, correct or not? And is it our right, for example, to refer to him as a man of innovations? And following from this, is he a mubtedia, an innovator? We do not get deeply involved in these issues. I advise to not be deeply involved in these issues in a deep way because we, in reality, complain now about this division that has occurred amongst those who attribute themselves to the Dawah of the Book and the Sunnah, or as we say, to the Dawah to Salafiyya. The main reason for this division, Wallahu Alam, is the person's self that calls him to evil and it is not actually disagreements over some of the opinions. This is my advice. This is what Imam al-Albani said. So start your advice and in your advice with these great Imams, what they said about some of these issues and so many statements. Like in Akhtarahum la ya'lamun. Wa Akhtarahum. Most of the people, they don't, they don't know. And most of the people don't even care. They don't even care what these great Imams of the Sunnah in this time have left. And those that are still living are leaving and giving us. They don't take heed to that. So make sure that you, and rest assured that these are advices from the Imams. Imams of the Sunnah. And we could spend hours going over the statements of Bin Arthimeen alone, and Bin Baz, and Kathir bin al Imam al-Albani. Isn't that sufficient? Because they were well-known callers to the book and the Sunnah. And not only were they well-known callers to the Book of the Sunnah, they were from the major scholars who made le many less mistakes than those who, who are much less in status than them. So begin and, and end your advice 
were what those imams did. And we ask Allah the Almighty to rectify all of our situations and bless us all to call to good and not evil and to call to unification based on the book and the sunnah, not on bid'ah and hizbiyah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.